Hey, this is Lincoln Brewster here, and we are hanging out down here in Corona, California with my friends at Fender, talking about the new colorway for my signature Strat. When the original signature came out, we decided to go with gold because uh, it was kind of like, yeah, that's your thing. I had always felt like the goal was really just to make a super great guitar that would work for as many people as possible. I understood that for some people, gold it, it wasn't for them, and I love uh, Olympic white. That was it's probably my second fave color. And then I saw the uh, Olympic white with the pearl on it, and it was. I was just blown away. I basically, during COVID, I took apart a guitar that I had that had an Olympic pearl white body and took apart one of my signatures and put it together and kind of made the first prototype. Took a picture of it and sent it to Joey and was like, bro, check this out. And uh, he said, ah, oh, that's pretty cool. Well, we've never done that paint in nitrocellulose lacquer. It sounded like there was some excitement with everyone going, cool, we, want, we wanted to do this in lacquer. And it obviously came out absolutely stunning. And then probably the other thing that I love about this color, especially with having the pearl in the paint, is uh, the way that it looks under light. When it's on stage, it just absorbs 100% of what's going on on the stage. It kind of started as a stock 57 Strat, and then we basically made what we call stealth mods to it. So it was things that, um, it's supposed to look like a, like a vintage Strat, uh, all things sort of under the hood. Starting up here, vintage style tuners, so you, you really just don't see them. One of the things that is the biggest tweak for me is the truss rod accessible from the headstock. It's an additional tuning feature that a lot of people don't get into, but it's such a great feature having it right there to, to tweak. It's it's like a smaller um, soft V neck, medium jumbo frets, compound radius fretboard, which is nine and a half to 14. And the bridge is set up floating, uh, which is how I use it, but two post with bent steel saddles, again, to try to retain that vintage vibe and sound, uh, but with the performance of the two post floating. Then we have DiMarzio Virtual Vintage Area 61 in the bridge, and then uh, Area 58's neck and middle. The 61 is a little hotter, a little beefier, but these are fantastic sounding pickups. Got to work with Stan Cody, and he did such a great job designing this circuit. And I just wanted the guitar to have, I guess it was that sense of when I was playing a stock Strat on 10, I just wanted it to go to like, 20, you know, on, on the volume, but just straight clean boost, you know, no frills. So we really worked hard to make that perfectly clean boost uh, that could be run on board. So basically, if you just pull the volume pot up, it's a completely flat, clean, additional 10 dB of boost. And then the, the middle tone pot, which I typically never use, I kind of was like, well, there's a spare knob here. So we made that an additional uh, mid boost. And then lastly, the uh, rear tone pot uh, is connected straight to the bridge pickup. So you can get these uh, kind of darker, fatter. You can sort of make it go from more uh, Strat Tele wide open. If you back that off, it gets very sort of PAF type attitude to it, which is really cool. And then of course with the boost, just tons of variety in the tones you can get.
growing up in the little fishing town of Homer, Alaska, you know, my options were go party and make bad decisions or sit in my room and play guitar. And so that's what I did. I didn't have um, a lot of uh, opportunities. Even there was no internet, there was not a lot of opportunity to learn. So we would have bands come through local bars and occasionally my mom would set it up where I could go sit with the guitar player and they'd give me a lesson here or there. And some great players up there who would just come through in these bands and I'd I kept notes that uh, from the lessons that they gave me, and some of the stuff I still teach to younger guys today. Uh, my mom was hugely influential. She's the one who got me started uh, in music with mandolin, and then it went to electric guitar. And once I once I played an electric guitar through an amp, it was uh, game over. You know, it was the Michael J. Fox in Back to the Future scene, <laughs> and I had a Walkman. I was on the school bus, and there was this strange looking cassette cover and it was this band called Van Halen and the album was Fair Warning. And I'm riding the bus to school and Mean Street comes on. I, it just mind blowing. And so Eddie sort of, like many of us, gobbled me up for, uh, for so long, but I was really fascinated by how emotive he was when he played. Stevie Ray, Eric Johnson, um, Probably my all-time um, is uh, Jeff Beck. Yeah, I still can't listen through uh, his version of Over the Rainbow without just, just being in tears, you know? So I think through this last uh, season of, of life, we probably all learned a lot about ourselves. I, I know I did. I have this um, just absolutely ferocious curiosity. I, I hope that more people find that in their lives. And it's the thing that keeps life exciting to me is I wonder if, and I, and I think most guitar players have this deep down. It's what It's why your tone's never done, you know, it's, why you always, you know, how many, how many more guitars do you want? Just one more, you know, it's, and it's always that way. The sense of curiosity, the sense of wonder, the sense of excitement, and, um, and then I think paired with sort of this, this optimism that I can do this, I can learn this. This feels daunting, but I'm not supposed to learn it all in a day. And, and one of the things that uh, we're getting accustomed to is instant everything. But the thing that doesn't come instant is like getting great at anything. Um, it's just not happening. And it's gonna take time and dedication. I try to keep the journey fun with, uh, with learning and looking out towards, hey, I'm gonna learn these new licks. And with the internet, you can learn. There's so much available out there. You just gotta look and take some time and and uh, make that investment, have fun, make sure you love it. I mean, I got two sons and I'm always encouraging them to do something that has n nothing to do with a screen. It's just this epidemic of this, right? And guitar takes you out of that. It, like, it puts you in a different space, it's tactile. You can do it with your eyes closed, you can, and it's, it's this uh, sort of never ending. I mean, I've been playing guitar a really long time. I'm still learning and I still, feel as excited about guitar as I did when I was nine. But that's a decision that you have to make. You gotta still look at it and think of all the notes you can play. Like there's no note you can't play on a guitar. Every note in between, you can bend, you can make different amp sounds. And it's, I just think that's so rad and, um, and exciting. And so I, I hope 
uh, lots of people go out and go, I want to try it. I just, I just want to put a guitar in my hands, uh, learn something and, and see what happens. And I think we need more of that in the world for sure. <laughs>